Good morning. Sorry, we were having a conversation. Let's switch. These things I have spoken to you, and that my joy remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, and if you do whatever I command you. That's taken from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 15. I'm going to tell you a story about something that actually took place in World War II. I want to thank. Um, this took place in February 3rd, 1943. It says, the U.S. Army transport, the Dorchester, was one of three ships in a convoy moving across the Atlantic from Newfoundland to an American base in Greenland. A converted luxury liner, the Dorchester, was crowded to capacity carrying over 902 servicemen. Is that a lot of people? They were merchant seamen and civilian workers. It was only 150 miles from its destination when shortly after midnight, an officer aboard the German submarine U-2 spotted it. After identifying and targeting the ship, he gave the orders to fire. The hit was decisive, striking the ship far below the waterline. The initial blast killed scores of men and seriously wounded many more. Others, stunned by the explosion, were groping in the darkness. Panic and chaos quickly set in. Men were screaming, others were crying or frantically trying to get lifeboats off the ship. Through the pandemonium, four men spread out among the soldiers, calming the frightened, tending the wounded, and guiding the disoriented towards safety. They were four army chaplains. Now listen to this. The first man was Lieutenant George Fox. He was a Methodist. The second was Lieutenant Alexander Good. He was a Jewish rabbi. The third was Lieutenant John Washington. He was a Roman Catholic priest. And the fourth was Lieutenant Clark Poling. He was a Dutch Reformed minister. So, do you think you had a lot of different denominations represented there? All right. Now, I read you that text because Jesus made it plain that no greater love has a man than he sacrificed himself and he laid down his life for another. And the story tells about these four chaplains from four different denominations and how they came together to help save these people that were on the ship. Okay? Quickly and quietly the four chaplains worked to bring calm to the men. As soldiers began to find their way to the deck of the ship, many were still in their pajamas where they were confronted by the cold winds blowing down from the Arctic. Petty officer John Mahoney, reeling from the cold, headed back towards his cabin. Where are you going? A voice of calm in the sea of distress asked. To get my gloves, Mahoney replied. Here, take these, said Rabbi Good, as he handed a pair of gloves to the young officer. Mahoney said, I can't take those gloves. Never mind, the rabbi responded. I have two pairs. It was only long after that that Mahoney realized that the chaplain never intended to leave the ship. Once topside, the chaplains opened the storage locker and began distributing life jackets. It was then that engineer Grady Clark witnessed an astonishing sight. When there were no more life jackets in the storage room, the chaplains simultaneously removed theirs and gave them to four frightened young men. When giving their life jackets, Rabbi Good did not call out for a Jew. Father Washington did not call out for a Catholic. Neither did Fox or Poling call out for a Protestant. They simply gave their life jackets to the next man in line. One survivor would later call it. It was the uh, one survivor would later call it. It was the finest thing I have ever seen or hope to see this side of them. Those four men gave their lives so that others could live, and that's what Jesus talked about in the scripture that we wrote or that we read. As the ship went down, survivors and nearby rats could see the four chaplains, arms linked, embraced against the slanting deck. Their voices could also be heard offering prayers and singing hymns. Of the 902 men aboard the USAT Dorchester, only 230 survived. Before boarding the Dorchester back in January, Chaplain Poling had asked his father to pray for him. And he asked his father, do not pray for my safe return. That wouldn't be fair. Just pray that I shall do my duty. 
and never be a coward, and have the strength, the courage, and understanding of men, just pray that I shall be adequate. Although the Distinguished Service Cross and the Purple Heart were later awarded posthumously, Congress wished to, to, to confer the Medal of Honor, but was blocked by the stringent requirements which required heroism performed under fire. So a posthumous <coughs> special medal for heroism, the Ford Chaplain's Medal, was authorized by Congress and awarded by the President on January 18, 1961. It was never given before and will never be given again. So what you saw from this story is that these chaplains did what Jesus Christ asked them to do. They were willing to give their lives for others. And that's what God asked us to do. Let's bow our heads. No matter what you love us, and you died for us on.